This is Kim from Emerging Creatively Tutorials, and this is ECT TV episode 49. So today I have a new episode of ECT TV for you, and it's a pair of earrings. We are smack dab in the middle of Earrings Every Day Month at Emerging Creatively Tutorials. So. Um, maybe you're playing along with us. We have a lot of people doing the challenge. Um, if you are, this is a great earring for you to make today. If you're not doing earrings every day month, um, you can still make these earrings, of course. Um, so uh, I can't wait to show you how to make these. Um, they're kind of fun. They're very simple, but they have a fun little thing because they're kind of hinged. Um, so they have a little more movement when you're wearing them, and they're a fun little shape. So um, I hope you enjoy making them. They're pretty simple, um, and we're just going to make the same shape four times to make this pair of earrings. So once you get it down, you um, really have this, these earrings down. So let's get started. For these earrings, you're going to need 20 gauge half hard round wire and you can use any metal that you want. You're going to need four jump rings, four millimeter. You'll need two beads of your choice, um, just two matching beads any beads that you like. I'm using these fall colors since we're going in the fall. And you will need two head pins. You can either purchase them made already or you can make your own. You'll need wire cutters and you will need round nose pliers and you will need chain nose pliers. And then to open the jump rings you'll need another pair of pliers, so any kind of pliers that are flat, bent nose are my preferred pliers for that. You'll also need two earring wires for your earrings, so you can either make your own, so if you're making your own you'll need some more wire, 20 gauge half hard round wire, um, a jewelry file, and then some sort of pen or marker just to bend around. Um, I usually use a sharpie, I just have this pen around. Um, or, like I said, you can just use pre-made earring wires, um, and you're good to go. Okay, we're going to start by making a bead dangle, or some people call this a wire-wrapped um, head pen. And, like I said, you can use any bead you like. Um, the only thing you want to think about with earrings is how heavy the bead is and how much it's going to pull on your ear. So keep that in mind. Pick whatever bead you like. I actually switched beads to a different bead um, that I'm using. So you can use a pre-made head pin if you like, which is what I'm using. It has a little stopper on the end. And you just want to slide your bead on to make sure um, that the hole in the bead isn't bigger than the stopper so your bead will stay on. If you're hole is too large or you just simply want to make your own head pin, you can. I have a, a bunch of tutorials on how to make your own head pin. So if you search over at KimberlyKohler.com, you will find a few. Um, so we're going to make a bead angle. So first you slide the bead on, push it all the way to the end, and then you want to get your round nose pliers. And I have a little tip for making your um, loops all the same size. You want to do this throughout a project. Um, you just take a sharpie and mark on your round nose pliers where you would like that loop to be and you can actually make it whatever size you want just follow that line throughout the project and they'll all be the same. So to make a bead angle you want to hold the head pin in your round nose pliers, and I've showed you how to do this lots of times if you've watched these ETC TV um, episodes, um, but you're going to line up this head pin with that line. So that line is here, make your head pin straight with it, um, and I'm holding it in my round nose pliers, so then I'm bending the head pin, head pin down toward me, and then around this barrel of the round nose pliers to make a loop. Now I'm switching over to my chain nose pliers. So 
so these are flat on the inside. Um, and you'll notice that this loop is off to the side. We do not want the loop to be off to the side. Um, there are lots of ways you can straighten this loop. This is the way I like to do it. I find it the easiest. Um, I hold the loop in my chain nose pliers and then I go around one time with my um, the you know the loose end of the wire as I'm doing that as I kind of get to this point I just bend the wire up uh, the loop up I just take my pliers and bend it up and then I go around the whole way and depending on the gauge of your head pin you can um, continue to do a couple wraps around and finish your bead dangle um, I'm going to switch hands. In my case, my head pin is pretty strong wire, so I'm just grabbing my bent nose pliers and I'm going to go around a couple more times and try to keep your wraps straight and close together. Okay. And I have a little bit of excess here which I'm just going to cut off with my wire cutters, making a flush cut. And then with my chain nose pliers, I'm just going to come in and make sure that end is not poking out. And you can just kind of do this motion to try and make sure it's not poking out. Kind of run your finger over it. Make sure everything is straight. Um, if your loop gets a little weird, which this did for some reason. You can just put your round nose pliers back in there. Um, push them in as far as they'll go and make your circle round again. So that is one bead dangle. Um, I'm going to make a second matching one and then we'll just put that to the side and work on the rest of the earring. Okay, so this is where the fun begins. So we're going to make our shapes for our earrings. Um, so I'm using my wire. Like I mentioned, it's 20 gauge half hard round wire. Um, any metal that you want to use is fine. And I have my roller and we're going to cut um, four pieces to about two and a half inches. And you can really use any you can really customize these to whatever size you want. So you might want to try them this way first and then experiment with larger or smaller. Um, and I completely encourage that. You know, I'm just giving you this as kind of a basic idea. So we're going to be making four of identical shapes. So each earring will have two of the shapes and those shapes are exactly the same. Alright, and like I often say with the earrings, it, you know, if you do go with a different size, just make sure um, all of your wire or wires are the same length. And then I'm just going to go through and make sure each wire is f flush cut on the end. I'm just making sure I'm getting everything lined up perfectly. So that all my wires are even, and these are definitely not on this side. I'm just checking again. And to do a flush cut, you're just basically using the back side of your wire cutters. Um, toward what you're cutting and it makes a nice flat cut. And just make sure your little wire ends don't flip all over the place. So I'm just going to start with one and I'm going to show you how to do it and then we just repeat it for all four. So I'm grabbing my round nose pliers and again I'm just going to use this mark I have marked about halfway on my pliers and you're going to want to make this mark with your sharpie on your pliers so that you know exactly um, how large your middle loop is so that this, it's the same for all of them. Um, it, you might think it's a good idea to eyeball it and maybe you can if you can that's great. I can't. <laughs> so as much as I think I can. 
Um, so, you know, however you want to do it is fine, but I suggest making that mark. All right, so now we're just going to hold this wire in around these pliers. And we want this to be in the middle, so you could measure your wire just to make sure you're in the middle. What I usually like to do is just kind of eyeball it and then just start to pull it the ends together and then readjust so I can find the middle. And now we're just making a loop. So the sides will cross making a move loop in the middle. And I'm just going to put this back into my Reno's players because it's easier to hold and do this next part. But the next technique you're going to do is you're going to round these wires this way. And what you're basically doing is, I don't know if you remember, if this is something people still do, I haven't done this in years, but you used to curl ribbon with scissors. So you'd put the pressure against the ribbon with your scissors and pull and the ribbon would curl. And this is the same pressure. So you're pushing, you know, against, so this rounds out. And then I'm doing the same thing on this side. And warning, this will be hardening your wire as you're pulling on it, um, so you don't really have a lot of chances um, to, to, to keep coming over the wire. Alright, so you want to make sure it's even. I'm kind of making a U shape. Now, my two... Uh, ends did not end up even. So I'm just going to go ahead and trim. And you want to do this now before you do the next part because we're going to put loops on the end and you won't have the opportunity to trim them. So just you can kind of eyeball it and make sure. So it's kind of like a little horseshoe here we have. Alright, and now we're going to put a loop on each end of this horseshoe um, and we're going to curl the ends in toward the inside. So I'm making small loops so I'm going to use go down to the end of my uh, round nose pliers hold this wire and we'll put the wire down straight and you should hold the wire so it's not poking through the top but um, it is at the top. You should be able to run your finger over so it's not poking through. And now I'm just going to make a loop. So I'm going to twist away with my right hand and I'm going to wrap the wire with my left thumb. I go as far as I can, readjust, and then complete the loop. So as you see, it's going inside. Okay, so now we're going to do the exact same thing on the other side. And again, the loop is going to go in toward the middle. So I'm twisting away and I'm completing the loop. And I'm just making sure everything is straight. So that is the shape. And we're going to make four of these. So um, just make them as close to exactly the same as possible. Okay, so now we have four. So I should have to make one, you repeat it four times, and they should all be exactly or, you know, as close to exact as possible. And then you just want to make sure they sort of line up to make the shape, and you can kind of fiddle with them a little bit, bring them in a little if you need to, so that they line up. All right. So now it's basically just assembling. Um, so I'm going to get my jump rings and we're going to open a few. I think I mentioned you needed four. You actually need six jump rings. I forgot that you need to also add the bead dangle to the end. So we're just going to go ahead and open up a few. 
Um, so if you haven't opened a jump ring before, I have a good tutorial on this video tutorial. Um, I'll link to it over on the blog post for this episode, which will be over at KimberlyKohler.com. The link will be below the video. Um, I'll show you quickly. You just find the opening at the jump ring, and then you center it in between two pair of pliers. I like to use um, bent. Uh, bent nose pliers and uh, just a regular pair of pliers and you don't want to open it outwards you want to open it back to front so if one pair you go forward one pair you go back and you have it open it still kind of looks like a circle and um, so that's how you do that so now we're going to attach these two components together and to do that we're just going to use a tempering so I'm using four millimeter jump rings and you just take one side and you put it in the loop and on the other one and you could just hang them like this. Um, you put that in the jump ring, the other loop, and then you close the jump ring which is just the opposite of opening it. Um, you might want to go back and forth a couple times past the point of closing and you'll kind of hear it or feel it click in most of the time. Okay, and now just don't get this tangled up and twisted. Just keep everything together. And then we'll take, whoops, hold on to your jump rings. <laughs> and place this jump ring through both loops. And close it. Now we have our cool little earring piece. And now we're going to take this jump ring and add a bead dangle to the end. Okay, and now to finish this earring, we're just going to add an earring wire. And you open up the earring wire um, loop, just like you do a uh, jump ring. Only, as you can see, I hold my earring wire with one hand and use my pliers in the other. And you just add it to the loop on the top. And then you have your earring. And now just do exactly the same thing for the other one. And I did want to mention, I did make my own earring wire, and if you come to the post um, about this ECT TV episode, which will be linked below the video, I will link you over to how to make your own earring wires if that's something you want to do and you don't already know how. So here are our completed earrings. Um, I love them. I love how simple they are, but they're still kind of unique. And like I said, you can really experiment. You can use whatever you want dangling from the bottom. You can experiment with the size. You can experiment with the shape. Um, you can make your own earring wires. And um, I'll, like I mentioned, I'll link to the video tutorial I have on that on the blog post for this episode, which I'll link below. So, I hope you had fun getting creative making these earrings. If you make this project, I'd love to see them. Um, you can post a picture over on the Emerging Creatively Tutorials Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash Emerging Creatively Tutorials, or you can share them on Instagram with the hashtag ECTTV, so two T's, ECTTV. And I will see it over there. I have to say, though, my Instagram on my phone hasn't been working properly, and it's been very frustrating. Um, so I will see it as soon as I can, and like it, and comment, and, um, and I am so grateful that you all watch these episodes, and I love hearing your stories, and I'd love to make, hear, see the jewelry you're making, too. So I'll see you in a couple weeks, and I hope you have a great day.